Right here. So, okay. So I'm gonna talk about an approach to mirror symmetry for log Clabio services. And this is um, joint work in progress with Andrew Hanlon. Um, and it's very much in progress, but I think we've sort of understand enough now that I can give a uh, semi-informative talk on the subject. So let me just remind everyone um, what a log Clabio service um, is. And so we're gonna consider log Clabio services um, with a maximal boundary. So, um, so what this means, um, sorry now, I realized I pulled up the wrong copy. Um, so, so what this means is that um, uh, you have a pair YD and I'm gonna slightly kind of misuse uh, uh, notation a little bit and call this pair a log Clavier surface. Um, but really you could call it um, something like a Luinga pair. Um, and so Y is just some smooth projective surface um, over C. And then D is an anti-canonical divisor on Y. Um, and we require that D is nodal, um, which forces it to be a cycle of P1s. And, and that's what um, sort of maximal boundary means. So uh, an example of this, um, you can take, uh, so, P2, um, and then with its uh, toric boundary divisor. Um, and then U, which is equal to Y minus D, is uh, just C star squared. Um, uh, or any other toric surface. Um, you could also uh, uh, take, um, say, like um, some uh, rational optic surface um, with an IN fiber, um, and you take that fiber uh, to be D. So, um, Previously, so these things have been studied kind of a lot in the context of mirror symmetry. Um, and in uh, 2011, Gross, Hacking, Keel constructed some mirror uh, family to, um, to such a pair YD. Um, and in doing so, they, they proved Luinga's conjecture um, about sort of dual uh, singularities. And then earlier this year, um, Hacking and Keating um, proved like a full uh, an HMS result for, for these pairs, um, meaning that they constructed uh, a mirror space X so that the derived Fukaya category of X is equivalent to the, the derived category of coherent cheese on Y. And so what they do is they, um, uh, they construct Lefschetz uh, vibration. Um, with thimbles, uh, mirror to um, elements of an exceptional collection for Y. Um, and it's a, it's a really nice paper, um, so I, I highly recommend it. Um, so what, what, what I'm gonna tell you about is, is sort of another perspective that we hope will generalize um, uh, to higher dimensions. Um, uh, so it's, it's gonna be a little bit different than that, the hacking Keating um, construction, um, but, but the mirror spaces X will be symplectomorphic. So let's see. So let me just sort of say a few words on how you could get um, you're getting your hands on some of these, these YD. So, so given such a pair YD, there, there are two moves we can do. Um, so the first is uh, to, to do what's called a corner blow up. So you blow up um, a node of, of your D. So recall that's a cycle of P1. So maybe you have something that looks like this. Okay. And then I'm gonna label these by their intersection numbers. So like say like, and zero and one self-intersection numbers. 
So this is equal to, to D1 squared. And then if I blow up, um, if I blow up one of these, these intersection points of two um, boundary divisors there, um, I get a new log Calabi Yau. Um, so now I have uh, added a component to my D. So this intersection number, so, so if this is the component I added, its intersection number is negative one. The, the um, adjacent boundary divisors uh, go down, their intersection number goes down by one. Um, and then this goes through some stuff. Um, and uh, uh, another, another move I can do, so um, I could take my D and then I could, I could blow up a point on the interior um, of, of D. So, so what's happening here um, is, uh, let me draw that a little bit better. So I have some, some kind of part those are both cycles. Uh, part of my D there, label it in zero and one and two again. And then now I just blow up a point on, on this divisor um, D1. And when I do that, so that one remains the same. Um, this self intersection in one, which I'll remind you is D1 squared. Um, uh, let's call that prime, sorry. Um, is a, a, the, um, oh, sorry, this is the proper transform. And this is equal to D1 squared minus one self intersection number just goes down by one. Sorry, that's meant to be sort of an exceptional curve hanging off. Okay, whatever. Um, the point is there's just some moves you can do here um, and it will kind of change the, the um, self-intersection, sort of the intersection matrix of, of your D and that's going to matter um, in, our, in our mirror construction. Um, so GHK, so Grace Hagen Kiel showed um, that every log Calabria surface has what's called a toric model, just meaning that given um, given a pair, oh, sorry, this should say with maximal boundary. So given a pair YD, there exists um, two other log Calabria services, um, one of which is toric, and you can move from, from the toric uh, guy, Y tilde. I can, I can move from him, um, to YD by doing interior blowups um, along the components of D tilde. So that doesn't change the number of components in your uh, D and then blowing down um, uh, components in the boundary components in the resulting log Calabria surface. So yet, you know, if you have something with negative one, self intersection negative one, you can blow it down. Um, sorry, so let me just try to, if you're, if you wanna just be convinced that these moves actually do preserve your log Calabria surfaces. Um, you can just recall that you know if you have a blow up um, from so y prime over y, and say this is like f, which is equal to blow up. So the canonical of y is just going to be so k y is equal to the canonical k y prime is equal to the canonical. back of the canonical y plus your exceptional. So you can kind of convince yourself that once you count with multiplicities, um, how the intersect the exceptionals are contributing to these um, yds, that that the resulting divisor you get is still um, it is anti-canonical in the block. Okay. So this this theorem um, that every log Calabria surface uh, with maximal boundary has a toric model is sort of key to the mirror constructions of Gross hacking Keel and, and also um, hacking Keating. Um, and essentially the, the philosophy is like, well, we understand mirror symmetry for, for toric varieties um, pretty well. And you hope to just sort of modify the story um, 
for mirror symmetry for, for this toric uh, pair yd, y tilde d tilde, to, uh, to obtain some sort of mirror space to um, your yd. So, so what GHK first do is they construct a space, um, I'm going to call it, so this is an integral affine space, I'm sorry. Some integral affine space um, say, um, say B bar. I'm just going to call it B bar because I'm going to have another a kind of a deformation of B bar show up later. Um, and then uh, the integral points in um, this uh, this space B bar um, are corresponding correspond to, to boundary divisors D. Um, with uh, um, matter is D and some compactification of your open clobby Yao um, so that the, the volume form on that open clobby Yao blows up along uh, those divisors. And this is generalization of the co-character lattice for a toric variety. Um, if you recall, like integral points in your co-character lattice, um, co-characters um, correspond to, to boundary divisors and some compactification um, of uh, C star, yeah, C star squared. Um, and then furthermore, when U is affine, you can construct sort of um, the dual, uh, this, uh, the dual space to, to B bar. Um, and this is going to parameterize these um, canonical theta functions um, in the, um, in the, the, the ring of functions on U. So this is from the description of y minus d as a cluster algebra. Um, and uh, uh, what well, I should say also that, that these theta functions um, form a basis for this space. So, so what's I'm doing, sorry, I'm doing my comments in. Um, and and so, so, you know, you have this h u equal to, um, the span of, of these q and v bar v uh, theta q. Okay, the construction of this b bar in, in Gris, Hack, and Kiel um, is by gluing together um, some some cones. So so we glue together um, uh, spaces of the form here. Um, so so this guy here, where uh, your your um taking your your fan of um your sorry you're taking your your boundary divisors in the in the y tilde d tilde um and you're constructing um sort of these unions of two cones here um and uh this this the space sort of or the integral affine structure in these cones is is determined um, by the self-intersection numbers, so of your of your components, so your self-intersection number. Um, your self-intersection numbers appear there. Um, so so let me just do an example. So if I blow up, so say I do P one, and I blow up. Um, and I blow up a point, um, and in, I do an interior blow up on one of the. So this is this is um, sort of the uh, the cartoon of the um, boundary divisors of P. Sorry, P two. Um, blow up a point on one of these things. So then my self intersection numbers are one, one, and zero. So what I do um, here is okay. If I start. So call this um, B1, B0, B2. So my first um, sort of union of cones of, of that form will look like that. Um, and then if I proceed gluing, okay, so this is sort of, uh, one, Zero, one, two, two. 
so this maps to negative one, zero, the self-intersection number of, of V1 is zero, then I can sort of glue on um, V1, uh, the cone that will correspond to, to having V2 in the middle there. Um, and that's just gonna be sort of a rotation of the standard sort of fan for P2, right? So, so this, you'll get this sort of space, V1, V2, um, and now this is V0. And then, uh, so this, the, um, the integral affine structure on this space does not extend across the origin there. So, so these things, these rays get glued, right? And you end up with a space um, with an integral affine structure um, that sort of has monodromy around the origin. So equivalently, what I can do um, is I can start with the fan um, of, uh, sorry, I should have drawn. I can start with the fan of y tilde d tilde and I can sort of add slits along rays which correspond to the divisors with blow up. Um, so a picture of what that would look like is, uh, sorry, let me, maybe over here. So if this is my fan for, um, for, for P2, what I've done is, is sort of blown up um, a point on, on the divisor corresponding to that character. And now um, the, uh, you get some space with sort of a global monogamy. Crossing here is just a shear um, along that invariant vector. So, um, so that just is going to look like, uh, um, sorry, one negative one. I could be getting a sign on there, zero one. So the 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 vertical line there is invariant. Okay, and we know that this y minus d has a Lagrangian torus vibration um, that has the same sort of global monogamy uh, as. Um, this base B bar um, and the base of this torus vibration will just sort of be the moment map um, away from uh, the, the moment map of the torus acting on, um, on uh, sort of a region inside of your interior away from the exceptionals. So note that, that C star squared um, lives inside that, that, uh, that space U. And so what we would like to do is define some sort of SYZ mirror and compactify by adding some boundary conditions um, following work of OU. So, oh, and I should also say that, that I've learned all of this sort of from word of mouth. So I apologize if I get a lot of the citations wrong. Um, I mean, I know that's work of OU, but um, the stuff about cluster algebras and, and so on, and I'm, and I'm happy to be corrected. Okay, so the mirror construction. Um, so this is, uh, following sort of this SYZ philosophy, we're going to define a mere space, um, but we don't like sort of the singularity at the origin um, uh, that you get by sort of adding, you know, as soon as you sort of add, um, as soon as you sort of blow up along more than one um, component in your boundary divisor, your singularity um, at the origin of your integral affine structure gets pretty bad. Um, but we can deal with focus focus singularities pretty easily. Um, by which I mean, if we, if we deform the GHK pace by pushing singularities out um, along sort of those boundary divisors, um, those rates corresponding to the boundary divisors, then um, we can end up uh, with this space, which I'm gonna call B, um, that has um, sort of isolated singular points and the singularity of the integral fine structure you know, um, along sort of the slits uh, originating from those points is, is just going to be a shear around uh, those slits. So, so then by work of Symington, what I can do is I can say, okay, well, um, away from, away from um, the singular points, so, so in the smooth locus B not there, um, I can, uh, I can I can consider the the cotangent bundle T star B naught that's a symplectic manifold. The integral affine structure um, uh, gives me a lattice in that cotangent bundle, right? So this is a sorry, this is a lattice bundle. So it's a it's a Z two bundle. 
Um, and, uh, and I can quotient out by that lattice bundle to get um, uh, a T2 bundle over, um, over B0. And so this is from the integral affine structure. Um, and then, and then I can glue in um, a neighborhood of the nodal fiber, and I can, after I do this, um, I will obtain some some symplectic manifold, which I can choose to be exact, and um, with the zero section where the the, the um, primitive of your um, symplectic form vanishes. So, uh, so I should say a few words. I actually don't think I had this on any slide. So by choosing um, the exact symplectic manifold, so that should that should pick out a um, a log clabiosis a log clabiosis surface yd in sort of the moduli space of such yd with a fixed complex structure, and there's a distinguished point in that moduli space where if it's um, uh, if you blow up on um, the uh, the points in the toric boundary divisors where sort of the orthogonal um, the orthogonal character um, is equal to negative one. So, so what I mean is like, um, so, so I should say that this is, so this is mirror to the distinguished point. And the moduli space YD. Um, and, uh, and what I've done is so, okay. So for example, if I take um, uh, so locally, well, okay, maybe I want to say that like there's an isomorphism for each di canonical isomorphism with um, uh, p1, and then I want to blow up at negative one. So, for example, for c squared, I would blow up at the point if I wanted to blow up a point on x on the divisor x equals zero, I would blow up x equals zero, y equals one. Um, okay. And then what I can do with that, that mere space is associate um, a monomial admissible through chi a category. So this, uh, so this is um, explained in um, uh, Andrew's thesis. So I think that was 2018. Um, which should just sort of encode the combinatorics of the sort of Fukayasidal category you would get by, by count, counting Maslow index two discs um, if uh, on the torus fibers, if you had this sort of identification of torus fibers with, with um, points um, um, the, the identification of, of torus fibers with special Lagrangian tori um, and your mirror with local systems. So um, what this means and um, is that I am gonna, or sorry, so what I do is, is I take um, a, a subdivision of your B naught um, delta and I'm gonna, uh, that divides, that divides this, this B naught or B um, into regions um, which each contain one ray in the fan. And I'm gonna demand that, um, Away from a compact set, um, your Lagrangians in the in your Fukaya category are the objects um, which uh, which uh, which have some sort of restriction on their their sort of complex perimeters. Sorry. So so what I mean there is I'm identifying. Um, so this is locally isomorphic to 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 C star squared. Um, and so, so note that, um, so note, um, an overlap on the overlaps, these will sort of be, if you think about these as sort of like, you know, linear conditions on the Lagrangians, on the overlaps, you're going to have two such linear, um, conditions. So on those overlaps, the Lagrangian, um, is going to be flat. Um, meaning it's going to, to correspond with the zero section in this, this quotient space. Um, uh, 
sorry, I should say, um, so I always a section. Okay. Um, okay, great. So, so the first theorem we have is that there's a bijection between line bundles on Y and um, monomial admissible Lagrangian sections up to compactly supported Hamiltonian isotopy. So um, what I do is I, uh, I define a graph in B and this graph is going to remember um, uh, this graph is going to remember um, the, the toric model. So, so what I do is I um, take sort of the fan, let me do this in different colors. So if I take the, the fan for the original um, sort of toric, uh, toric, um, toric pair, and then say I, um, okay, I'm gonna make, I'm gonna say a fan, give you a fan that I don't think makes sense. Um, meaning, well, okay, I think, I think this does. So, so, so say I, I take um, uh, I'm just gonna use the one I used before. So, okay. So, So I think this is a toric model for P1 times P1, um, but with um, uh, but I start with a toric model P, P2, do one blow up. So that's sort of um, the fan for that. So that's P2 with, with a blow up, a toric blow up or an, a corner blow up. And then um, as a result, um, um, Probably I want to blow up twice. Sorry, so then then if I further blow up, if I do an interior blow up on one of the components of your divisor, um, then I'm going to end up with the divisor uh, with self-intersection negative one, and then I can blow down that divisor. So the graph, after all that, is I keep the, the boundary components which don't get blown down. I, um, and I, uh, so this gets blown down in my toric model. Um, and then I also sort of keep um, sort of the, the rays, um, the segments of the rays along the, the, the fan corresponding to the things that get blown down. Um, I keep sort of, those rays up until the slits. So, so for this, my graph would be that. So that that sort of purple thing. So this is equal to, to my graph, capital G. So I'm calling it little G there. Okay, then I can define a sheaf um, on B and the, or I can define two sheaves on, 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 on B. Um, so first of all, I, I consider the sheaf of linear piecewise linear functions on B, which can bend along the segments of G. Um, and then I consider the sheaf of just linear functions sort of on U, that should be B. And the theorem um, is that if I take um, the, uh, the quotient sheaf, um, of PLG mod GL. So this is this is the quotient. So I have to sheafify. So I should write. So this is a quotient sheaf. Um, that thing is, is isomorphic to um, your uh, second cohomology of Y, um, which is isomorphic to your Picard group. Um, because you, you start it with some sort of toric thing. So H2 is kind of concentrated um, in the middle of the, the Hodge diamond. Um, and then you've just done blow up. So, so you remain with sort of um, 
your H2 is, is isomorphic to your Picard group. So every such, uh, so how can we sort of understand global sections of the sheath? Well, every, um, every, uh, every section, global section um, has a, a, a associated sort of set of um, integers um, for each, for each um, segment of, of my graph G. So this is called an NG for G and G. Um, so, so how do I define this? Um, well, I just take, uh, so over some open set, I take a representative um, of my phi and then I can say, well, um, I had I had some piecewise linear function and and crossing the rays um, uh, of uh, sorry crossing the segments of G is going to add um, some number of components of the the piecewise linear or the linear function which vanishes along that linear segment of G. So for example, um, so if I take a PL function and then on this guy and I kind of look at um, Sort of draw a region. So it's sort of in this region. Um, uh, so this is, let's call this V. So this is a picture of V. Um, so, so if I, I define um, the, the piecewise linear function, which is X here and X plus Y here. Well, if you control for the monodromy, so the monodromy around this slit is um, uh, one, zero, one, negative one, one. Um, this, uh, uh, this function x um, under the transpose inverse um, uh, goes to x plus y. Um, so, so that means that this function x here is actually sort of flat along this, this segment. Um, uh, here, um, which which we know it has to be because we don't let we've deleted that segment there, so, so we've deleted that segment there, so it's not allowed to bend along that segment, um, but but it can bend on on this sort of truncated segment of that ray, um, and indeed it does. X goes to x plus y it is not a linear function across that way. Um, and, uh, and what you've done is sort of add, um, or as you go up, you've, you've um, as you go across that, that slit in the, the uh, counterclockwise direction, you've added negative y. So that would say that um, this uh, in here, um, this, this bend here is negative one, this bend here is zero. Okay. So, okay, so all of that is still on this slide here. Um, so this is just from before the stuff at the top. Um, so so then we note that the G, so the G and G in the graph G correspond to, um, they each correspond to, to um, homology classes in your Y. Um, so, um, Uh, so the, the, the rays going off to infinity, um, so if I hadn't deleted that ray, that would correspond to some boundary component, say D alpha or DI. And then this would correspond, I'm going to say that that corresponds to um, the exceptional divisor. Um, cor uh, this slip means I blew up once along I, so I have an exceptional divisor, it's called EJ. Um, so using these bins, these bins give me an element um, uh, of um, well, they they give me a you know an integral function on um, this set of of uh, um, cycles in your your second homology um, of, of an integral function on that, um, and then we can show that that the kernel. Um, um, of uh, of this map phi, so sorry, so so then I have a map 
from 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 phi to, to this B of phi in this home space here. And I can show that the kernel of that map um, is equal um, to the, the kernel of the map from, from this space here, which is just some you know collection of, of cycles in uh sorry, so I should cycles in Y. Um, and uh, I have a map from that to, to the second homology. Um, and uh, um, for, for each, so the kernel of your, of your B phi is equal to this kernel. Um, so, so for each uh, B, um, you get an, or for each phi, you get an, an element in the second cohomology. Okay, now we're gonna repeat that, section, that whole process on the Lagrangian side. So if I have an admissible Lagrangian section, um, I can also define sort of the bins um, of, of L. So if I have, um, so how I do this is, is for each, uh, so I, I keep the same graph G. So in this case, it would be sort of this thing. In purple again. And uh, let's not forget. Um, sorry, let me let me not add that. So so this would just be sort of the the space you get with singularities of blowing up one point on on P two again. Um, and so my segments are, are this guy. This guy, this guy, and this guy. This is going to correspond to the boundary divisors. So D0, D1, D2, and this is going to correspond to the exceptional E. So for each of each of those, those segments in your graph G, um, I just associate a curve, gamma of G. Um, which uh, which sort of crosses um, crosses your your G and 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 goes between two points sort of in your intersection of your two regions, which are the regions where Lagrangians are flat. So, for example, this would be sort of gamma E, and then this would be gamma D naught. Um, then over, over these curves gamma, I can associate some cylinders, um, which are, are just going to be cut out by um, sort of the, the dual uh, the dual differential form being equal to zero. I'll tell you what that means, um, times S1. And then I can take my Lagrangian section um, and, and consider its inner, you know, after perturbing, I consider its intersection numbers with these cylinders CG um, and you get well-defined numbers. Um, so, so what this means is like, what do I mean by, by this thing? I mean, like, you know, if I cross this right here, let's assume I had no slit, I'm allowed to, to, uh, to go from like, you know, X to X plus Y um, so these correspond to, you know, points dx, dx plus dy, and t star b. Um, and uh, I have this, this, um, in my sort of torus fibers, I have a well-defined sort of um, S1 there, which is um, going to be given by uh, dx sort of spanned by like um, zero and a dy for a and S1. Okay, so a little more detail in the construction of these Lagrangians. So how am I going to get this? So so I'm going to use the fact that um, my my dual space or my 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 x here is um, is equal to this this uh, this quotient of your your cotangent bundle. 
so to a smooth function on on your um, smooth locus of your integral affine space, we can associate um, a, uh, a Lagrangian a Lagrangian section in in your x naught. So so this is just the graph of the the differential. F. Um, and then the question is, what smooth functions sort of allow us to extend um, this Lagrangian section LF in X naught to a Lagrangian section in, um, in X? So we need some sort of condition on the differentials of, uh, of your functions F. The condition is going to be that um, if some partial derivative vanishes, then, then LLF extends to the Lagrangian in X. And what I think this is, it's easier to see this sort of um, uh, visually. So, so the point is that um, the function, okay, so if I have a slit like this, the function x, sorry, the function y um, is invariant. So if I have a, a function purely, so what this, this, this condition here is telling me is that if I have a function purely of y, um, then uh, then I can extend um, that function. The the graph of the sorry the, the Lagrangian corresponding the graph of the differential function across um, that slit there. So if I draw sort of the constant lines of my function, so I'm gonna I'm gonna like instead of kind of giving functions by coordinates, I'm just gonna draw constant lines um, of of that function. So I, I have a smooth um, uh, so I just, yeah. So I define in, in this sort of chart just defoliation by the, the constant lines of the function. Um, so here, um, what this, what you're, you're doing is, okay, if I have a function and I know it's supposed to be sort of, I wanna, I wanna kind of define a function which is sort of supposed to be X and then X plus Y um, again. Um, so I have to interpolate between the functions x and x plus y. So, so the sort of um, the lines tinge this curve here sort of interpolate between one zero and and one one um, or one negative one. Sorry. Um, and uh, uh, here, um, uh, these lines are actually like these lines which I've drawn with a bend are actually straight. So in order to extend this x, x plus y sort of differential across um, that singular point there, I have to sort of do um, some sort of smoothing uh, to, to, to have that second derivative, that derivative uh, with respect to x sort of vanish at that point. So d dx f equals zero. Okay, um, versus if I had this function like zero, if I wanted to interpolate between the function zero and y here, um, then uh, I, I just I can I can just sort of take the function which is identically zero up here, and um, and uh, and sort of glue it onto a function which sort of turns on this y function. So here you know maybe it's like y squared, something like that, some smoothing. Um, and uh, the point is that sort of on this boundary of this neighborhood here, these functions are equal. Sorry, like the point is I can kind of glue this in. I could say glue this into the zero section just as well as I could kind of glue this into the zero section. Um, because these two uh, on, on this sort of region here, they differ by an element in GL2. Um, uh, so, 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 um, so sort of topologically, these Lagrangians, or not topologically, but, but um, these Lagrangians are not Hamiltonian isotopic to each other under, um, sorry, if I did that sort of gluing in process, these, these, Hamil these Lagrangians would not be Hamiltonian isotopic to each other under a, um, a uh, compactly supported Hamiltonian isotopy, but, um, but, um, they would be 
sort of everywhere outside of, of this shaded region here. Um, and I can show that that L deforms to the zero section. Um, well, I compact it, I should say. Thanks for the isotopy. Um, if and only if sort of all of these bins in G um, are a vanish. Um, so then again, we can sort of so associate to L some element of your second homology of Y. Okay. Um, let's see. So, so then the theorem is part two. Um, says that uh, if D supports an effective D ample divisor, so um, this is this is equivalent to, to you being um, affine or um, or uh, you um, being deformation equivalent to the GHK fiber. Um, then there's a canonical intersection um, between um, uh, the the line bundle. Um, sorry, the, the global sections of, of a line bundle um, supported on DI um, with um, the, the C-span of the intersection points of some perturbation of the corresponding Lagrangian, um, uh, say L phi, that's phi is for that, you know, the, the element of um, that, that quotient chief of, of multi-valued piecewise linear functions um, intersected with, with L0. So, um, and, and this is what, you, you know, this is one step you'd expect if you're trying to prove um, a full HMS result. So, um, so in this case, um, the, the point is that um, L being supported or the line bundle being supported on the divisors is equivalent to um, uh, so to uh, to this L C H um, being um, being uh, the graph of a um, globally defined function on B. So, so then I can um, sort of ensure that, that um, L phi H, this, this perturbation of this uh, Lagrangian L phi um, does not have sort of any intersection points with um, your zero section again after perturbation um, uh, in a neighborhood of the origin, except for, for one point. Um, so, so then I can um, lift this guy to a section of um, the tangent bundle because it's a graph of an, an honestly defined function, um, which is um, canonically isomorphic. Uh, this this b minus this neighborhood of the origin times this um, b naught star. Why do you do that? Uh, okay, and then you can look at the projection um, to this this uh, b b r b by star um, of your of your Lagrangian under this product. Um, and uh, so so I didn't say this, but so so b bar star times B um, as an inner product. And you should think about this as generalizing um, the inner product between co-characters and characters. Um, and uh, uh, what you get for this projection, and, and sorry, I should, I should actually say like, so if you fill this in um, around the origin, you're just going to get this sort of polytope um, in this B, um, B star, um, which uh, is cut out by, by these systems of, of um, uh, linear equations. Um, 
and and that makes sense because of this thing having this natural inner product. Oh, the sun is really bright now. So, um, if you look at if you look at um, uh, now the intersection, I keep putting B bar is there because I forgot when I was doing this that I was distinguishing B and B bar. Um, if you look at the intersection of this polytope with the integral points in this B bar, what you end up is uh, with is is a set of functions Q, um, which have the valuation their valuation along your your divisor di less than ni. Um, and, and this is a basis for um, the global sections of your uh, um, of your uh, line bundle, um, and this follows from from work of Mandel, Travis Mandel. So, so the point is just like kind of we've uh, we've uh, we've generalized the notion of polytope, um, uh, or like you know the polytope corresponding to a line bundle. Um, to to this setting. Okay, so let me just do an example. So I was going to do a torque example, but I don't think I have time. So I'll, so I'll just do a non torque example because that'll sort of be more fun. Um, so so the example is um, so y is equal to a cubic surface. This is great because there's a great paper working out you know the mirror symmetry story for for this. Uh, for this guy. Um, um, and so D, so I'm going to get this cubic surface by, um, so you take P2 with its toric boundary, and then you do interior blow ups. So you blow up two points on each of those components. And so the, the self-intersection numbers here are negative one, negative one. Okay. Um, so I'll cones um, and sort of instead of sort of adding the slits. Um, what ends up happening is that the monodromy um, is equal uh, to negative the identity. Um, so this is a, this is a picture of B bar. Um, And uh, and this is great because some of us are very prone to sign errors. Um, and uh, you can say that the the phi um, uh, piecewise linear function um, corresponding to d. Um, I take sort of values one, uh, one, one. So I think negative one, negative one, negative one. There. Um, and and so if I can, I can sort of smooth. So I can smooth this to obtain a Lagrangian, um, and. Uh, uh, the graph of this Lagrangian. Um, so, so in uh, so B, the dual sort of uh, integral affine space. It's going to look like this, but, but rotated um, forty-five degrees. So I know my piecewise linear function here has to sort of have slope um, uh, negative one, one, right? So that's going to correspond to um, say this guy. And then if I slope function in there is going to correspond to um, this guy this guy. This is probably going so fast that no one can understand it, but I just want to convince you that you get the at least the, the equivalence of the cardinality. Um, uh, so that 
so if I draw sort of the polytope connecting all of these guys, so this is P, which is equal to the Newton polytope of generic section of um, uh, D. Sorry. L of D. And I can see that it has four intersection points. Um, I say four because note that this intersection point, these two get identified. And then we note that H zero of D um, is equal to, okay, well, you, you started with um, your toric divisor for P2 and you blew down six times, right? So it should be 10, which is the, um, the number of sections of, uh, of your triangle on P2 minus six equals four. And you can actually match these up with functions um, on, your, on your, uh, your Y with its uh, canonical embedding. Okay, so now with my like remaining two minutes, I'll talk about some some speculation. Well, okay, let me let me pause here, and um, uh, no, I'll just go. So, I, what I would like um, is to actually be able to upgrade sort of this result to a full HMS result. Um, so, what I would like to show is that um, I, I have I have I have an isomorphism of, of graded vector spaces. Um, so. And I would like to upgrade this to, to, to an isomorphism of algebras. Um, uh, so, so this is sort of the homogeneous coordinate ring. Um, I can multiply things there. And um, I would like to sort of be able to, to multiply points um, in, uh, in, um, uh, in the, the floor complexes, right? So, uh, and this is where all the sort of wall crossing, I, I mean, I know it's like kind of strange, right? Cause I haven't had any sort of wall crossing or um, broken line multiplications or whatever come in to play. But I would like to, to, to sort of understand these um, uh, multiplications between, between these, floor, these floor groups, um, right? So I should say that this is generating set of um, HF star. Uh, uh, L um, so so I would like to, to sort of use the fact um, uh, I would like to, to sort of evaluate on fibers. So generically the fibers, okay, we're gonna have all these fibers that bound disk um, that sort of emanate from the, the singular fibers, right? But generically the, the fibers are, are unobstructed um, and we would like to to say, well, maybe I can understand these product formulas in a very roundabout way by sort of checking that that these things evaluate kind of correctly on points. So that's the slogan. So, um, in this um, in this uh, this this space um, uh, of intersection points, um, I can I can consider the floor product. Um, of, of it with with the intersection point. So so sorry. So so um, I can consider the floor product um, between this is L zero um, this is L phi um, and and this is T and I can look at disks. So if if this is Q um, so I, I would like to look at disks, um, Q, uh, so this is, um, P zero and the output of this, this is going to be P one, which is a unique intersection point of, of your fibers there. Um, and, and, uh, okay. So, so I have some sort of disks here. In the toric case, um, uh, you don't, the output of, of here, 
sorry, if I fix, if I fix um, this, and the, if I fix an intersection point, I look to the universal cover, I fix an intersection point, then these two points are determined. But here uh, in the log Fabio case, because I have some monodromy, they're not, um, right? So, so, so if I, if I sort of uh, uh, have the boundary of the disk going around sort of singular fibers, what I can do is, okay, maybe here's sort of one disk that contributes to this product. Um, but I could have another one where, where I uh, you know, sort of do some other things. Sorry, and what I should do here, what should, this is an important point. So the point is that I know that my Lagrangians are, are sort of constantly and flat um, in certain regions uh, at infinity. So I wanted to consider this, this is T, this is very far away um, from sort of the, 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 um, the interior of your B. Um, so if I have a disc uh, like that, I could also sort of have a disc and say maybe now uh, my, um, you know, my D, uh, so my D, you, this gives me a class in the um, pi zero of B naught. And then this determines the area of my disk because that's going to determine um, what, um, uh, where these, uh, where these outputs lie. So maybe here's, that's a terrible picture, but I can get disk with larger and larger area by sort of considering um, more complicated loops in the, the fundamental group of my, my B naught. Um, uh, but the, the thing is that um, I, uh, uh, I don't know whether or not these disks exist. I would like to, you know, you would hope that like the count of the disks corresponds to the count defining data functions. It's kind of broken lines or whatever, but that's sort of hopeless. Um, so instead what you wanna do is say, well, I actually only need to check um, some sort of formula like here, this multiplication formula at finitely many fibers um, because, uh, because I know that this output um, in, the, in the floor product um, of theta Q and or theta Q1 one and theta Q2 um, is going to land um, in, in sort of um, uh, part of this graded, this graded ring um, uh, of, of small degrees, right? I have a bound in the degrees. So, so in order to check some sort of um, equality of theta functions, um, all I need to do is check for sort of finitely many fibers. And what you hope is you can kind of play games where um, you can get the leading terms of these discounts um, in, in certain regions. So, so one, one strategy, let me just, just finish here. One strategy would be to say, okay, well, um, I can understand how, um, if, if I have a disk there, then I can understand how U deforms to nearby fibers um, by sort of all these wall crossing techniques. So, you know, Abu Zayed, uh, Bukaya, but maybe I don't need to understand all of that. I can just sort of understand finitely many disks here. And indeed, um, I can get uh, sort of the leading terms of this expansion um, uh, in, in certain regions. So for example, I'm gonna have some disks um, which, which don't, which sort of correspond to the disks you would expect in the, in the toric settings. And then for certain fibers, those, those, um, uh, the areas of those disks are gonna be much, much smaller um, than the areas of, of any um, other, other disks. Sorry, that made no sense to anyone, but the point is just like, there is a little bit of hope for, for doing sort of the theta fu function 
multiplication calculations with this method. Um, and so I'll, I'll end there and, and stop for questions. Thank you. So questions? Uh, you mentioned at the beginning that, that you're hoping that this uh, fudged up uh, Newton uh, polygons are going to make sense in higher dimensions, but it wasn't clear from your discussion how uh, everything seemed to be really tied up to the components of the boundary being P1s and... Uh... Well, yeah, so sure. So, so that's a good question. Um, I actually prepared a slide for it. So the point is that... Um, the point is that, okay, you're right that, that um, these isomorphisms of intersection points with sections and so on, those really require a lot more characteristics to, to, to understand. But, um, but in terms of um, the, the very beginning, um, I didn't, uh, th this correspondence between line bundles and um, line bundles and monomial and invisible Lagrangian sections, that doesn't actually use any of, of um, dimension two phenomenon phenomenon. So so what I could do is if I have like a Y D in higher dimensions with a toric model. Um, then uh, then I can still um, uh, get um, an integral offline base um and uh um but now you're gonna have um uh you have to deal with um intersections of um uh, so now your singular fibers are gonna have co-dimension one so they mm -hmm. might um you might have sort of two rays of singular fibers that are that are intersecting so that are intersecting so you're gonna have you know that comes as one, and then uh, sort of uh, intersecting some other. Okay, <laughs> that's just meant to be like a, a, a different cycle is sort of collapsing, um, and uh, and and you'd have to figure out a model for that. So I think you could use maybe work. Um, Desired in Sylvan. Sylvan. Um, and then, and then, sorry. So this, so, so these are all going to happen once you um, want to consider this. Um, mod mm -hmm. this, um, mod this, uh, this lattice bundle. Now going to be a Z three bundle. Um, but once you sort of deal with that, then you should still be able to 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 sort of smooth. Um, but you're still gonna sorry. So then you're still gonna have um, some isomorphism pick y with this um, PL mod GL sheaf, um, and uh, and you can still construct um, uh, uh, smoothings of of these of these PL mod GL functions. Mm -hmm. And you would hope that that would give you near symmetry. Um, obviously, there's a lot of work to do there. But but I think sort of the difference is like if you look at how um, Abu Zayed sort of treated near symmetry for toric varieties. He, you know, he has these two papers. Um, the first would sort of be this 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 approach I mentioned, where okay, you want to match up canonical um, this this coordinate ring with with this um, uh, algebra of generated by the four intersection points. But the second one is, is sort of more topological and you just kind of look at the cohomology um, of, uh, of your base, right? Um, so, so that would, so the hope would be that this would generalize with that, that second approach. Um, and uh, I should say that that's definitely like the more promising direction. Um, this, uh, this calculation here seems, seems pretty tied to dimension two. Of course, things are easier in dimension two because you have this deformation equivalence between um, your your guy and this mirror. Okay, thank you. Any other questions? Yeah, I have a quick, 
I have a quick uh -huh. question. Yeah. Um, so how much have you guys managed to think about the general case where D isn't ample yet? Um, so, so all of this stuff, well, not very much besides for this, um, this so, uh, the stuff, the stuff with line bundles is definitely true no matter what. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, and I think like, you know, you would hope to sort of proceed. Certainly, I think we could we could just match up um, match up sort of the line bundle stuff and in dimension two with, with your guys' work um, and say maybe, okay, well, these I can if I sort of take appropriate cones on line bundles and whatever, I can get sort of the exceptional collection you're considering. Um, I haven't thought about that at all, but but one could probably hope to prove um, some sort of homological near symmetry more directly from that that approach in, in that dimension. Yeah. Um, but uh, but yeah, in the in the higher dimensional case, I, I think I would have to sort of understand these like near cluster algebras and, and whatever a lot better. And yeah, but just but just in the standard case, given that you haven't done because D is isn't ample very often, right? Well, no, I don't. Well, sorry for, for... sorry. Maybe I feel like this is going to get technical and I also have suggestions to do with references. Mm -hmm. um, so maybe we, sh uh, maybe we should keep chatting and let Tony wrap up. Oh uh, yeah, we can just- You're recording and then you can just sorry. keep chatting.